Can you believe they're going to try to blame the jab on Trump? That's, that's wild, because they're obviously forgetting that entire portion, the big important portion when it comes to this stuff. Trump, yes, under Operation Warp Speed, the COVID vaccine ended up getting uh, discovered, created, leaked out of a lab somewhere, whatever you want to believe when it comes to that. Sure, that happened under his administration. But now they're going to take the implementation of the democratic policies of forcing everybody to get the jab in order to exist in polite society. That's going to be a bridge too far. It's going to go from, if you don't take it, you're an evil anti-vaxxer, to Trump's death jab. You fucking watch this narrative shift. It's, it's going to be something. Trump's White House exerted pressure on the FDA for COVID-19 emergency use authorization. Trump's White House... Trump was last in office in uh, January 19th, uh, I guess for the morning of January 2020, or January 20th, 2021. Get the date right, okay? And ever since then, all the insanity has happened under Biden, so it doesn't really much matter if Trump was pushing for this stuff back at the time. Ultimately, ultimately, like we just seen with Joe Biden forgiving a whole bunch of student loan debt, they're going to try to pillory Trump because, oh, he wanted to get the jabs out there by election time so that people were like, oh, shit, he's actually taken this shit that we've continued to tell everybody in the world that he's not taking it seriously, that he's downplaying it. You can't have your cake and fuck it in the mouth as well. It's it's just not going to happen for you. The Trump administration pressured the FDA, including former FDA Commissioner Stephen Hahn. I feel so bad for him. Uh, to authorize unproven treatments for the COOF and the first COOF vaccines on an accelerated timeline. That's why we're still under emergency youth, uh, use authorization just about two years fucking later. Hmm, weird. Uh, according to a report released Wednesday by Democrats on the House Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Crisis. How amazing Democrats are leaking this out right now. First, you forgive a student loan debt, you continue to push the abortion narrative, and then all of a sudden, now the jabs. Now that now it's starting to make a lot more sense why you're getting all of those reports when it comes to certain medical conditions popping up here. Now you're starting to get people start to question the jab out in the open. Fucking amazing coincidence when it comes to the timing of this. Senior uh, Trump administration officials sought to reauthorize... Oh, sought for the reauthorization of hydroxychloroquine, a drug normally used to treat malaria and lupus, after the FDA revoked its emergency clearance. Oh, they revoked that one, but then continued to re-up the emergency use authorization when it comes to the jabs. Odd. Very odd. Very, very odd, right? Of the drug because the data showed it was ineffective. Oh, okay, cool. It showed that it's ineffective. Okay, now do the jabs. Uh, safe and effective, though, by the way. That's with the FDA, who also revoked something that I'm pretty sure the president himself used. Or him and Joe Rogan. Or was that just horse paste, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nothing odd about this. Just, just listen and believe, guys. Uh, the Democrats' investigation also documents potential influence from former White House officials regarding the FDA's decision to authorize convalescent plasma. And White House attempts to block the FDA from collecting additional safety data on the vaccines. Oh, it was the White House that was attempting to block a uh, collection of <laughs> data. So, okay, cool. So you knew about this data block that was happening at the time. What has stopped you from reporting the data now? Just asking for a friend, for a friend. A select subcommittee's findings that Trump's White House officials deliberately and repeatedly sought to bend FDA's scientific work on coronavirus treatments and vaccines in the White House political are yet another example of how pr the prior administration prioritized politics over public health. Jim Clyburn had the audacity to say, are you out of your fucking mind? Holy... I don't even know where to begin with that. That is so fucking ridiculous. Remember, remember which administration tried to use OSHA to make sure that everybody got those, as you're putting it, all, all of those jabs that were out there in order to go to work. Who is, which administration was it that made it political over a public health crisis? Well, just wait. You go ahead and clarify your situation. But of course they won't. It's all about how it makes you feel. It's not about the facts. These assaults on our nation's public health institutions undermine the nation's coronavirus response. Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. 
remember, oh, Trump was trying to downplay this and now take a look at all of the CDCs. I know it's a different organization. It's still run by the same fucking people. So bear with me for a second. Look at all of the F or the CDC's recommendations right now. Do you think Trump was right to downplay this? Just asking now for clarification. He's not around anymore. Big scary orange man. He's, he's, he's in the shadows right now. Unbelievable. Much of these pressure campaigns uh, were reported in early 2020 by Politico and other outlets. And President Donald Trump publicly called out the FDA and the commissioner on multiple occasions. Yeah, you forget the whole Operation Warp Speed. Uh, get rid of the uh, bureaucratic tape that was there. Was, was that the right decision at the time? We don't know, but you guys have all these reports that just seem to gaslight the public so openly. But it's by Politico, so that means you need to believe it. Substantial portion of the report focuses on Peter Navarro, a former trade advisor under Trump. Boy, was he the guy who was in the labs with the beakers in order to try to make this mRNA vaccine or vaccine work? Oh no, that was Dr. Robert Malone. You want to talk to him? No? Oh, okay. I understand. Uh, who worked with the administration's coronavirus response. Uh, Navarro collaborated frequently with Stephen Hatfield, an adjunct virology professor at George Washington University, who's one of Navarro's advisors and worked on federal coronavirus response, pushing for hydroxychloroquine. According to emails collected over the course of the uh, subcommittee's investigations, Navarro and Hatfield rallied other White House officials to pressure Hahn to reinstate the emergency use authorization for hydroxy hydroxychloroquine after the agency revoked it in June of 2020. Huh, weird. Okay, so a guy who's, uh, again, let's just say the Stephen Hatfield guy, an adjunct virology professor. Okay, and Peter Navarro, a numbers guy, who is probably in charge in some form or fashion. I know it's dangerous to give Politico a little bit of good faith interpretation of the facts, but if, Hat if Hatfield's a professor and Navarro was in charge of some subsection of this coronavirus response, wouldn't you want to take their opinion on the situation? Okay, just, just saying, if they're virologists and they're numbers guys, wouldn't they kind of know a thing or two about a thing or two as opposed to a bureaucratic institution? Not in Politico's interpretation of the facts. Anyways, at one point, Hatfield characterized the disagreement agreement between the White House officials and the FDA as a forthcoming knife fight to an unnamed outside ally over email. Okay, just trust us. We got an outside source. Do you need to name it? No, it's it's our source. Shut up. You don't need to know about it. The report also found that Navarro asked ha or tasked Hatfield uh, with coming up with a presentation to get the FDA to reauthorize the drug. Okay, what's wrong with that? At one point, Hatfield wrote that William O'Neill, a cardiologist at the Henry Ford Health System in Detroit, and suggested conducting a phil uh, uh, prophylactic study, uh, the medication, on a correctional facility experiencing a coronavirus outbreak. Okay, we know the side effects of hydroxychloroquine, so... What would have been the problem with running that test? Just wondering, just wondering. O'Neill dismissed the suggestion, saying, I know better than you. I work for the FDA. Get fucked. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He was a little bit more um, forthright with his response. There are all sorts of regulations about enrolling prisoners in randomized trials. Oh, where these breakouts were actually happening and that they're, what were their symptoms again in the places like these meatpacking facilities and these prisons? Oh, did nobody report any symptoms, but then they tested positive for antibodies? Hmm, weird, very weird. Most uh, institutional review boards would never approve. I'm not licensed in Indiana. Cool, so they floated an idea out there and now Politico is saying, look at what kind of monsters these guys are. Yeah, I don't see any politics. Politics at play when it comes to health and safety of the American people. None whatsoever. Of course not. Phil and Navarro sought to discredit other prominent health officials. Oh, I see a name. Do you see a name too? I see a name. Uh, who spoke out against the use of hydroxychloroquine, including Anthony Fauci. Who gives a shit what that little fucking gnome has to say about literally anything? Remember, that motherfucker thought that AIDS was an airborne virus. AIDS. HIV. Airborne virus. That's what Fauci was purporting at the time. He's a smart man, and he thinks that he can just slink off into the distance. Oh, oh, for jail. Jail. That's the only place that you're going to be slinking off to, you fucking murderous cunt. Uh, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Not anymore. Uh, the two discussed plans together. The Department of Justice. Sorry, what? Start fucking firing it from helicopters? And the Health and Human Services Department. Inspector General to conduct an investigation into Fauci and his email use. Okay, now you're starting to speak my language. 
Hatfield, according to the report, pushed for Fauci's removal throughout the fall, telling Navarro in September, you really need to consider what is likely to happen over the next two months if this little idiot and his COVID treatment panel are not fired. Some, why wasn't anybody listening to these guys? That sounds very, very um, good information, considering everything that we know right now, and specifically his email trails that are out there. Holy. So, okay, cool. You want to hold Trump accountable for the things that he knew in private, for the ideas that he was holding and contemplating behind closed doors, but yet you're openly describing this stuff and you're trying to protect uh, Anthony Fauci at any costs, like your fucking stands for this little gnome? Get fucked, you bunch of liars. In a statement to Politico, Navarro maintained that he believed hydroxychloroquine was a valuable treatment for the coof, and that he was justifying it, or justified in carrying out Trump's order to apply pressure to the FDA to make sure the drug was widely accessible. Yeah, no, exactly. Run your tests and whatever you want. That's all he's advocating for. He's not saying just, I don't know, put it in the fucking tap water. Like you guys would have to do. Again, that side of this conversation wanted to make public life inaccessible to anybody who is unjabbed. But no, Trump and his people are the bad guys. They're the ones to blame for forcing the jab on people. Okay. Oh, political pressure. Oh, boy. In multiple instances, the subcommittee said it found evidence of senior Trump officials. Oh, okay. Planning to take actions that could benefit the administration politically. Wow. Wanting to get the vaccines approved, which, when were the announcements? Oh, right. Two days after the election was made. After the election was called, too. Huh. Funny. Nothing political about that at all. Of course not. You see how closely that the CEOs of Pfizer and Moderna work with the Biden administration? No. See how much money that Pfizer and Moderna clear for the uh, financial year of 2021. Nothing suspect about that at all. That's not political. No, of course not. It's Trump who's trying to be political. Unfucking believable. And remember, remember, you can go and you can watch all the clips that said, oh, uh, Trump, ugh, there's no way, no way that these vaccines are going to come out. Okay. During one of the political or during one of the presidential debates, um, excuse me, you're being irresponsible by saying that we're going to have vaccines by the end of the year. And Trump said, no, I'm in touch with a lot of my experts that are out there. And they say that we could even have them quicker than that. And again, when was this shit announced? It was announced in early November. I remember doing the video when it was first announced during that time. And then they were ready to go. And the numbers were wildly different back then of how safe and effective they are. Now we know. Now you have all of the research that's out there. Remember, you're purporting all of this suppressed information that's out there. Okay, cool. Now do your update. The Trump administration also tried to pressure the FDA to authorize the first COVID vaccines ahead of the presidential elections. Yeah, okay, if they were ready for distribution. And remember, they were being distributed still during Trump's lame duck period. So he was right in pressuring them. Looks like it worked. But again, you wouldn't want to do that because the FDA, take a look at who's in charge at the upper levels of the FDA for proof of concept. Ultimately, the FDA went ahead and... Uh, uh, with a 60-day follow-up plan without an explicit blessing from the White House, though the White House later cleared it. Oh, sorry, I missed something right there. When Hahn testified to the subcommittee in January of 2022, he said that the White House officials said that they would not sign off on an emergency use authorization language with, oh, that required a 60-day safety follow-up for a late-stage clinical trials. Was that a part of Operation Warp Speed, or are you just leaving that out? Because I don't see that mentioned in here at all whatsoever. Hatfield rejects the notion that this conduct was politically motivated. I am a doctor, and I was called to serve my country in that capacity. Politics had nothing to do with the work of saving lives during the coup. Hmm, imagine that. Oh yeah, and then they'll just try to drag Navarro and Hatfield for their emails, but outside of that one reference to Fauci's emails between him and some Wuhan officials, no, 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 it's Peter Navarro who's a bad, he's a bad guy because he was talking about the election at the time, and Hatfield who's, yeah, no, he's just a quack, uh, a respected virologist. Okay, cool. I see what you guys are doing here. You're trying to shift the narrative, right? Safe and effective to Trump's death jab. You see it coming from my loy. Mark me down day one. I'm on top of this. You just wait. You just wait for this narrative to shift because the Democrats have nothing. 
They have nothing that they can tout when it comes to being effective, when it comes to the economy. And just remember the campaign they ran back in 2020. They'll be able to do and run on the exact same platform in 2024. Orange man's bad. Don't you remember how bad he was? That's what they'll try to do, okay? Just fucking wait for all of this shit to spin out of control. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.